Here we are still at the Sassafras. We've moved into our spot back in the back of Lloyd's Creek. There's a bunch of wood that at low tide is real shallow, but we knew if we came in here at the right tide, there was gonna be some big fish in it just because of the quality of the cover. And sure enough, here they are. This is one of the only spots right now that has grass on it too. And I think that plays a big role in it. Nice, almost five pounds. Would have been five pounds if we had got it in the spring for sure. Five pound bass. I just had that eggs, go. it really would have been a trophy now. See that food? No eggs in there, I'm pushing on them. Yeah, that's food. That's food, I can feel it actually. Look, rubbed red here. See the red there? Now look at its tail. Tail's all rubbed red. Um, on Brant, that's some right. guide service. Out here on the Sassafras. Let's craft, get its lungs gone. going here with lots of oxygen. And let it go. Nice bass. Pattern to start with early for the rest of the boat get to it okay we're in post-spawn condition just like anywhere else in the country when bass are post-spawn that means you're gonna throw a lot of different baits there won't be one pattern there'll be about probably five or six different patterns all working together right now so got a little bit of cloud cover we plan on targeting some shallow fish most of your fish in this lake are gonna be in three feet or less of water there really aren't many deep water fish in here so a lot of shallow areas with search baits like crank baits, buzz baits, especially we're hoping the buzz bait will pull some bigger fish. Uh, if you get into the heavier cover, we'll even work a frog and maybe flip a tube in the wood. But hopefully we can get on some big fish. It's a little bit slower today than, we normally, than it's normally been, but that's just because of the tide. When we got here, it was slack. And now it's just starting to come in. Our better fish catching tides here when the tides are really coming in like the last hour and then as it switches over to the whole outgoing so anything we can really get right now is pretty much a bonus and that's that's a 15 inch fish sections but all through the river right now not even just in freeman some in turner some in mcgill uh, anywhere where you can find emerging lily pads these lily pads come up late in the year they generally don't come up until june when the water temperature reaches about 75 degrees and as soon as they come up the bass, as soon as they just start to break the surface, the bass congregate in here. And this will be our pattern probably all the way through August. Still back in our original spot, Freeman Creek. We've ran pretty much the three or four other spots. Still using the same bait with your spinner baits, buzz baits, and crank baits mixed in. Tide is wrong. That's what's happened today. We came here, it's, man, it's never wrong, but it's not our tide that we prefer. So I just said, let's just sit here while I wait for the tide to get to fall, I'm going to try something to draw a reaction strike. I was actually working the Senko up on the surface like a floating worm, just walking it, almost like kind of like a sluggo shad assassin. And that drew the reaction strike out of these flooded pads. The tide's as high as it gets, so actually the pads aren't even on the surface. So the bass are down further, making them harder to catch. But you jerk that sluggo back and forth or a Senko back and forth, they'll come up and grab it. Nice fish. Good, great tournament fish. You, know, you just keep changing and changing and changing. Tell them what we did here to catch this, what's been going on. We threw the Senko around maybe six times. We're still in the same area. We probably spent three, last three hours in this little pad field. Went around and around with the Senko. They finally stopped hitting that. Then I threw the buzz bait around and around. Then I threw the spinner bait around and around. Nothing, not a strike for the last half hour, 45 minutes. So I said, maybe the crank bait would do something different. Worked through the first section, we were thinking, man, they won't even hit that, and then we're talking about it. We caught everything on the Senko, and I just said, I just can't believe this water, warm of a water temperature. I can't make them hit something else, and I just worked that spinnerbait and buzzbait to death. They just wouldn't hit it, so that goes to show you that there are times where you really need to throw these crankbaits on these tidal fish. Um, they just, they love spinner baits, they love buzz baits, but they won't always hit it. These smaller crank baits that run anywhere from a foot down to three and four feet are the ticket. I just lost another fish just a couple minutes ago, the same size, maybe even a little bit bigger. So that would have been great in the tournament, goes to show you. She's blind. Hit the crank bait about three pounds. Okay, well, what we've been doing is practicing our new tournament technique technique that you can use to win on all these rivers in the northeast particularly the rivers that are on the chesapeake bay potomac upper bay what you do is you find an area that has the right cover to where every time you consistently every time you go to that river you always catch one or two bass there well 
what you do is sit on that spot. And you stay on that spot eight or nine hours, whatever the length of your tournament is, and you throw buzz baits, spinner baits, senkos, crank baits, top water, frogs, all your baits that you normally catch bass on during the course of the day. You section that part off and you throw it in that little one or 200 area, acre area. And over the course of eight hours, you get five to eight bass to call out your five that weigh 13 to 20 pounds, depending on what kind of day it is or what kind of fish have moved in. Now explain. I even caught some of the other fish. A lot of guys know where this is. They don't spend eight hours on it, but still they work it. They throw the spinner bait. So right away, when I, they wouldn't hit the spinner bait at first. So when I threw the crank bait, that picked up a lot of fish because nobody reels the crank bait through this thick lily pads. It gets hooked up too much. So then he put on the spinner bait and jerked it really erratic. The spinner bait was never just reeling in, it was jumping. Even with my buzz bait, I've been going like this. I mean, killing it, jumping it, jerking it, jerking it. I mean, really weird stuff when they're hitting it. They come out and they throw out their bait and they just turn their handle. And that works sometimes, but after enough guys come through a certain area during a tournament weekend especially, or after they've been practicing all week trying to find their fish, and then you show up the day of the tournament trying to do the same thing, it's not going to work but you make that minor little adjustment. Okay, here we are, Sassafras River. River. We're getting ready to back our boat down. We got a small club tournament here today. Uh, top prize in this one, I think is 2,400 for first place, 1,500 for second, and I think it drops to 900 for third. So we really need to come in the top three if we wanna cash a good check. Um, we're gonna, it's supposed to rain heavy today, so we're really gonna concentrate our time in a couple areas that we know bass are. Here's the baits that we're going to use. Terminator spinner baits in half ounce, golden shiner and white, both tandem, Colorado and Willow. Uh, Man's mid minus, this is the Elite Series, it's a little bigger, better paint job, extra rattles, black buzz bait, and of course our Senkos and Ica tubes. So those are the baits we're going to use. We're going to use them on G. Loomis and St. Croix rods with Shimano Cross. See, that's a decent, you know, hefty fish. You'd be happy with them in a tournament. Mm -hmm. Now, I caught him on the cut tail worm. That's a six and a half inch, isn't it? Or is it six? Six and a half. Six and a half inch so, Yamamoto bait. And uh, this is the first real nice one now that we've caught. Uh, should have seen that one fight on the spinning rod. Well, here we go. We're still in the same spot. This is our technique that we've been winning tournaments with and we're planning on winning quite a few more in the future with. We just get up into a good spot where we've caught big fish before, like last week with a client we caught one here that was six. Today, here we go, we're banging off threes, fours, and we had one that was probably five and a half or six. So I just picked this other one up again. This is on a cut tail worm. People aren't onto this bait yet. They're using Senkos, but they're not using Yamamoto cut tail worms. And we've got them in lots of different sizes and colors and that's really going to work. Here we go, we're going to let this one go. Right here at Turner's in the same spot. This is a Sassafras River. We're, we got a nice 17, 20 pound bag today in the middle of the summer and it's 93 degrees. $2,500. Total purse on the co angler side, $10,450. Big bass on the co angler side, $497.50. And we'll also pay back 30 places on the co angler side. When you're ready, I'm ready. Again, we'll pay back 30 places on both sides. We'll pay back 15% of the field. Got to go home with the check today. Our next event will be on Lake Champlain. Should be also be an excellent, excellent event right there. And our field size should maintain just about the same when we go to Lake Champlain for our next event. How'd you do? Save some videotape. I have a 14 pound, maybe 15. All right. Should do it. This is Kurt's boat. Getting ready for the weigh-in now. Looks like he's got a good set. Waiting to get a bag in line. It was one bath, probably probably about the six.
Good job. Big bass worth $9.95 today. I'll take you forward if you would step right up here and set your fish right in the basket for me. Kurt Von Brandt, boat number 150. He's got a five bass on that fish on the co side. It's a nice look at five bass and there will be a top five stringer on the co side. 16 pounds, nine ounces. Good job, sir. Congratulations to you. Kurt. Got a big fish in there? I'll take you cold if you would set your fish to that. Big and Mayor, boat number 150, Arlington, Virginia. Got three in there, Stephen. We wait seven to fifteen. We thank you. All right. Good, sir. How about you? A tie in second place. The both receive $1,052.50. The weight, both had five bass limits. The weight, 16 pounds, nine ounces. Ronald Kershateri and Kurt Von Brandt. Camera. Thank you, man. In fourth place, Henry Jr. Tail, so I got the third place trophy, but we tied for second. We had to split the money too. One thousand fifty-two dollars would have got more if we hadn't tied. If I had had one ounce higher, but oh well, still a good day. Did the best I could for the back of the boat.